Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part two of a series of video about updates in periprosthetic infection. In this video, we will be covering the updates in the classifications, definition, and diagnostic criteria. The information of this video is based on an updated version of the Pro Implant Foundation as well as the paper recently pub published in the EFORT Open Reviews about current concepts and outlook. If we start with the classification, the classification is based on the bacterial attachment status to the surface, dividing it into either acute or chronic periprosthetic infection. In the acute case, the bacteria can be reversibly detached from the surface, easily detached. And this occurs in the first three to four weeks of the bacterial attachment. However, after three to four weeks, the bacteria is permanently adherent to the surface with the biofilm. So at that state, there is a chronic periprosthetic infection because the detachment of the bacteria from the surface is almost impossible. Both types, the acute and the chronic, are caused by direct infection or direct transmission, like in the perioperative infection or a blood-borne organism transmission. High variant organisms like the Staphylococcus aureus will cause acute infection with aggressive general and local manifestations, while low variant organism will cause low grade infection turning into a chronic type manifesting by only minor local signs or symptoms. Differentiation between both depends mainly on the aggressiveness of the manifestations and the durations of symptoms. Being the most commonly encountered organisms in the periprosthetic infection, we must know, know, we must know more about the basics of the Staph aureus. Staph aureus, it's a gram-positive cocci. Their virulence comes from being coagulase positive. They have, or they are capable of producing a coagulase protein or a coagulase enzyme, which is able to transmit or to transform the soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. This insoluble fibrin network will protect or will encycle the organism and protect it from the phagocytosis and isolate it from the immune or the host uh, defense mechanisms. Several definitions and diagnostic criteria exist for PGI, but I will discuss in this video the simplest and the most reliable criteria approved by the international consensus meeting in 2014 and 2018 and according to the pro implant foundation so the definite ex the definite diagnosis or the definite definition of infection is having one or more of the following criteria they took four principal criteria on which the diagnosis was built. And I will discuss each one looking with a deeper look to understand how it was chosen. Starting with the clinical features, we will find that they relied on only one thing, which is the detection of a sinus or perilence around the prosthesis. 
And this was specific, 100%. That means that once you detect it, it's diagnostic. But however, its sensitivity was, is very low. And that means that it's present only in 20 to 30% of the diagnosed cases. Other clinical features are suggestive. That means that they are not a definitive clinical sign. So for example, general manifestations of acute infection, this is suggestive. Or for example, symptoms suggestive of implant loosening, this is suggestive of chronic infection. However, detection of a sinus tract visible purulence around the prosthesis is the only clinical definitive sign that you can rely on according to the criteria. The second diagnostic tool is the most reliable with the highest sensitivity and specificity, which is the detection of the amount of leukocytic count in the synovial fluid aspirate. If we discuss the blood tests and its role in diagnosis of the PGI, we will find that all blood tests are insufficient. They are only suggestive or may be suggestive of infection. For example, the acute inflammatory markers, the ESR and the CRP, they are often normal with low variant organisms in chronic cases. Even in acute cases or acute infections, for example, after the operation, you cannot rely on the acute inflammatory markers because they are usually elevated because of the surgery itself. So acute inflammatory markers are not specific even in acute infection. So the only value of the blood tests in the PGI is the serial management uh, measurements uh, in cases of follow-up of the disease progress. Going back to the synovial fluid analysis, it's the most valuable diagnostic tool and should be done in every painful periprosthetic joint for diagnosis of PGI, especially before revision surgery. After having the synovial fluid sample, you should send it for analysis, asking for three things. The number of leukocy leukocytes, or white BCs, the percentage of the granulocytes from the total leukocytic count, and asking for culture and sensitivity of the bacteria. The first two tests, they are simple and rapid and, if, uh, and is of a very high sensitivity and specificity value. The other culture and sensitivity is of a high specificity, however, of, uh, it's of moderate sensitivity. This is because several reasons. The delay in transport or the long transportation time after having the sample may decrease the number of bacteria. So it's advised to send the sample as fast as possible. And if not possible, just in a, uh, put it in a pediatric blood uh, culture bottles that will preserve and will uh, allow growth of bacteria. Also, think about low variant organisms or difficult to detect organisms, especially in chronic cases, and ask for extended cultures, incubation for 14 days. Looking at this table, we will notice that the number of white BCs and the percentage of polymorphonuclears varies in different conditions. Normally, the number of white BCs should be less than 200 and with less than 25% granulocytes or polymorphonuclears. This may be more or increased in non-inflammatory conditions like trauma or in inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. 
but these numbers will not exceed a certain limit except if there is a present bacterial infection. So if the white BCs exceeds the number of 2000 with a predominance of acute cells, acute granulocytes, or acute polymorphonuclears exceeding 75%, so that's diagnostic of the presence of bacterial infection. If we take this sample as an example, this turbid sample aspirated from a fluid or aspirated from a loose total hip uh, replacement before revision. Although it looks like pus, however, the number of white BCs count was 1,500 with a polymorphonuclears of 70%. And that was not pus. It was the fluid aspirated from metal on metal joint. New diagnostic tool is alpha defensin. This is actually a protein released from the polymorphonucleus in response to a bacterial infection. It is not elevated in other inflammatory causes. So it is now used as a biomar uh, biomarker for periprothetic infection. However, it's of high sensitivity and of moderate a high specificity of a moderate sensitivity. It's not suitable for screening because of its moderate sensitivity. However, it's used now in early post-operative when the synovial fluid white disease is not reliable. The third diagnostic tool is taking a tissue histology or taking a biopsy and looking at the number of inflammatory granulocytes in the high power fields. Detection of more than 23 granulocytes per 10 high power field is diagnostic. This is of high specificity and of moderate sensitivity. So a tissue biopsy is taken whether by arthroscope or open surgery and is subjected to immunohistochemistry to detect by immunofluorescence the presence of poly morphonucleus in tissues. The last diagnostic tool relies on detection of the organism in either the synovial fluid, as we said before, which is of high specificity and moderate sensitivity because of the delay in, uh, in sending the sample or of low organisms that is not detected on usual culture and you should send it for extended cultures or in tissue sampling. So the presence of organism in more than two of at least three collected samples is diagnostic. And that is of high specificity and a high sensitivity. Searching for the organism in the tissue biopsy. We should not rely except on deep biopsies. Swabs, whether superficial or deep, are of low sensitivity and misleading and should be avoided. Usually we take from three to five tissue samples and send them for culture and sensitivity in the operation. One positive sample for a high virulent organism is diagnostic like Staph aureus and E. coli. For low virulent organisms, two or more positive samples are diagnostic. Sonification, this is a procedure that is not present in Egypt However, it's built up on taking the implant, applying uh, uh, or, or exposing the implant to a low frequency ultra, ultrasound waves. This ultrasound waves will help the detachment of the biofilm from the surface of the implant. So the fluid up, uh, uh, available after sonification will be rich in the organism and will be, uh, can be easily uh, sent for culture and sensitivity to detect the organism. If we look at the diagnostic criteria, we, we will find that they did not consider any imaging study because all imaging studies are suggestive. 
For example, the radiographs, if you have a radiolucent lines more than two millimeters or osteolysis around the implant, this is suggestive, but not diagnostic of infection. Maybe it's an aseptic loosening. Bone scans, especially technetium 99, is suggestive of loosening, but they are of very low specificity. Maybe this is enhanced by using indium, which is sensitive for, leucos uh, for, for leukocytes, especially, or technetium labeled monoclonal antibodies against the leukocytes. Recently, the PET scan. The PET scan depends on the intake of radio uh, of, uh, of isotopic glucose by different cells. It's a combination of an isotopic scan with a CT scan, giving a fast, safe, and a high quality imaging. And it has been proven to be of moderate to high specificity and sensitivity for detection of infection. However, still it's not a fully reliable diagnostic tool. Finally, this is the diagnostic uh, algorithm reported in the current concepts of the e 4 to open reviews, discussing all what we said before. The most important thing in this paper is that if all the diagnostic tools are not conclusive, you have to repeat the aspiration, which is the most reliable diagnostic tool again after three months if all the above investigations are not diagnostic. So in summary, classification is based on the bacterial attachment status to the surface. If it's reversible, so it's early and acute. In irreversible cases, so that's a chronic infection and you will not be able to detach the organism from the surface. The definition is presence of one criteria or more of the following. Clinical features, sinus tract, or periods around the organism. The presence of more than 2,000 leukocytes. 70% of the granulocytes are positive in the synovial aspirate. Biopsy detecting tw more than 23 granulocytes per high power field. And finally, detection of the organism in synovial fluid or more than two positive tissue samples. Thank you.